This week on football, Fatou loses his balance. Everton have deducted points again. I can use about the first point deduction. Um, there's not a lot we can do about it, but we can only just put performances on the pitch. Mbappe asked for Pedri's shirt. Dan makes a good point. I've always said stats are like bikinis. What they show you is interesting, but what they don't show you is equally as interesting. <laughs> that, That's very that profound. Funny. Roy Keane kicks off at Jill Scott. And Michael Chopper joins Goalpost TV. Who's he? Welcome to this week's episode of Goalpost for Jumpers. It is me, your host, Alex. I am joined by my co-host, Gareth. What's happening, guys? And this week we are joined by the legend, the man himself, the man who did this. It's Michael Chopra. Thank you. Welcome, mate. It's great no to problem. have you on. Yeah, really cheers, great, great to have you on. You've just told us you travelled four or five <laughs> hours down to come down. It wasn't especially not, not for us. Not for this podcast, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Yeah. Nah, I, I, I left my house at Newcastle uh, probably about 2.30 in the morning. You're mental. I had a meeting in Cardiff, so I just thought I'd tie them both up. And obviously, look, we've been speaking for a long time about coming yeah. on the podcast. So here I am today. Man, yeah, honestly, uh, as I said, I'm a huge Cardiff fan. Dream come true. Dad, look, Chopper's with me. Uh, <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but mate, yeah, it's really good to have you on. Obviously, everyone watching knows who Michael Chopper is, former Newcastle, Sunderland, Cardiff, Ipswich, uh, Blackpool striker. You've played with some unbelievable yeah. players in your time. You're talking Alan Shearer's, Michael Owens, Gary Speeds, Shea Givens, Craig Bellamy's. Patrick Cliver. Patrick Cliver. John Parkin. John, John Parkin. Parkin. Unbelievable. <laughs> hey, what, Balance that's... Dior winner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was going to ask what, you. eating pies or playing yeah. football? <laughs> Both. I, li- I like <laughs> that it started with a bit of needle. I like that. Yeah, but out of all those players, obviously not John Parkin, uh, who who inspired you the most? I think probably Alan Shearer. I, was, I thought uh, you said that. Yeah. Being, being a Geordie, growing up in Newcastle, um, he was probably my idol. Obviously, when he came to the club, it was, look, it was a dream, do you know what I mean, for mm. me being a striker. Um, obviously I just won the Premier League at Blackburn coming to Newcastle for a record fee as well mm. 15 million I was there um, when he came on the stage outside St James's oh, Park wow. in front of like 15 20,000 people I was, think I was probably were you in the academy at that time or I would have been in the centre of excellence yeah. yeah so I was coming through as a kid um, and then obviously as I got older and we'll speak about it we I become really really close with him mm. so would you say he's the player that's most inspired you? Is he also the best player you've played with? I think so, yeah. Um, obviously, before Alan came to the club, I was watching Newcastle when Andy Cole was there and Peter Beardsley. Um, so I was watching how they would play and, and, and that sort of thing. But when Alan came, um, it was, I was just fascinated by him. Can I ask you, do you, do you think Andy Cole is underrated? I knew you were going <laughs> to... I'm a Man Look, United fan, but yeah. like obviously Andy Cole for what he's done in the Premier like League. Three million he signed as well for Man United. Like. Seven million it was from Newcastle, was yeah. But they got Keith Gillespie as well in yeah. in, mm. in uh, Port Exchange. I th- I think he's underrated. No one talks about him. No, no one talks about 
the partnership he had with Dwight York. It was the best partnership I've ever well, seen in my life. That's probably why they won the the treble that year. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. Because of Coley and and Yorkie. But uh, look, he's, the amount of goals he scored in that season for Newcastle uh, before he's moved to United, and then obviously what he'd done at United was phenomenal. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And to continue it, it probably doesn't get the recognition. But I that's probably so. because he didn't have as many caps to play uh, while playing for England. It's probably as the well. England thing as well, isn't it? But yeah. it's hard when you've got. I think. Teddy Shangham was in front of him and obviously um, Alan was playing as well at the same time so and then Owen came get, through later as well trying to get them well. out of the team is, is yeah. difficult yeah and obviously you mentioned the sensible ex- excellence you obviously played for Newcastle I really wanted to ask because I see you on Twitter you're still going to games yeah what did Newcastle mean to you as a club well look I'm, I'm a Geordie do you know what I mean yeah. I, I, I bleed black and white I, they're, they're my hometown club it was a dream come true to, to play for them mm. Um because it was always my ambition since I was a young kid. I wanted to put all my heart and soul and effort into becoming a prof- professional footballer. And then to actually make my debut and win the black and white shirt at St. James's Park, it was it was a dream come true. It was a special yeah. moment. What did that feel like, you know, walking out that tunnel? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're wearing, as, as you Do say that black and white, you're actually wearing the kit with the Premier League badges on your arms. You know, how it's, does that it, feel? it's funny you say that because I, I was one of the happiest kids alive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Going on to the pitch. And then the end of the game, I was probably the unhappiest. Um, we played Everton in the Worthington Cup back then, what it was called. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know the story. Yeah, and um, we, I think we drew three three, and it's gone to gone to penalties. Me being a Geordie, I'm saying to Bobby Robson, "Yeah, yeah, I want to take a pen." <laughs> I Every- love that. How old, how old are you when you're eighteen at the time? That's, That's insane. 18, that yeah. takes some bottle. That I would do it play. now at thirty one. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, obviously leading up to the game and all like you're practicing penalties and everything in mm. training, but taking penalties in training is totally different to uh, to to take them in a big big arena, big stadium. Um, so yeah, Bobby's put my name down and I've gone up to take a pen. And for some reason, I don't know why, whenever I've taken a pen in the youth team reserves uh, in training, I've always hit them hard and low. But for some reason, I've tried to stanch it. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, and it's gone over the board. You know what I mean? And I was absolutely devastated. Um, I got in the change room. We lost the game. I got in the change room and I was just standing in the showers and like tears coming down my eyes and stuff yeah, like bet. that. Yeah. Um, and then Alan's walked in and uh, he could see I was Shira. upset. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Alan didn't play. He wasn't playing in the game. Um, but he come in to to see me, to see how I was because he knew I was upset. And then he was like, um, "Don't worry about missing against Everton. Try fucking missing against Sunderland. It's oh in front God. of the Gallagher." Yeah. So I think uh, a couple of seasons before that, or the season before that, he missed. Uh, in front of the Gallagher, um, Sorensen saved it. I think it was, and he was like, "Fucking, that's when you worry." When, yeah. do you know That'd what I mean? That'd be a horrific. It, it was yeah, it yeah. was brilliant though because you had someone like yeah. as high profile as him. He didn't have to come in, and yeah. he was like, "At least you had the fucking balls to take it." You've got players mm. out there who we signed for five, ten million. Yeah, didn't have the balls to go and step up. Yeah. Do you think so, that earned you a bit of respect in the squad at that point? Then, like at a crucial time <laughs> at eighteen years old. Look, I was always in and around the squads. I was always. Part of that group, Gary Speed, Alan Shearer, uh, Shea Given, Titus Bramble, Dyer, Bowyer, mm. Solano. Um, I was always around them, do you know what I mean? So it was good to that you had senior players coming up to one of the one of the kids and, and putting them ar- arm around. He didn't have to do that. No. But it was it was good that he recognised that I was upset and, and that sort of thing. What was that dressing room like at Newcastle? In that period of time, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. To be fair, you obviously yeah. we had signed a lot of young players, but they were f- good young players. So mm. Obviously, Kieran came, Titus, Kieran, JJ. Um, you had Boya. Um, these were young up and coming stars. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Darren Ambrose was there with me. Um, going out in Newcastle was brilliant. Do you know what I mean? You, it's you, great you, night out, isn't it? Oh, yeah. you, you hear things back, back then. It was yeah. unbelievable because. The team was doing so well. We won the Champions League. Yeah, and then you, you're going out in town and you're a superstar. Do you know what I mean? And for yeah. a local mm. lad and being 17, 18, being around that was wow. <laughs> well, I, I can imagine. Before we go on with the other questions, I want to introduce you to a feature we do on this podcast. It's called Two Lies and a Truth, <laughs> and it's Michael Chopra themed. So two of these stories are lies <laughs> and one is true, and you need to try and convince Alex. Which basically you need to read them out and you need he needs to try and guess which one is the lie right okay so here are the stories could you read these stories out <clears throat> so basically one is true 
Two is Alive. Two Alive. And then Michael Chopra themed. Yes. See if you can do that. We normally do it the other way around, by the way. Yeah. Right, but okay. because he's such a Michael Chopra fan, <laughs> well, he said, I'm, no, I'm going to know the answer know anyway. Story, so. right, okay. Yeah. okay, go for it. Okay, the first one. Yeah. Whilst coming through the ranks at Newcastle, Chopra once accidentally took Shiro's boots on by accident. He was fine because he didn't turn up for training for two days out of fear before he realised that they were actually Shea Gibbons. <laughs> two days. <laughs> okay. Okay. After signing for Sunderland, an angry Newcastle fan threw a shoe at Chopra's head while he was clothes shopping in a busy Newcastle shopping centre. 100%. That's, that's the one. It's got to be. What, a lie or truth? That's got to be true. Okay, let's you, you the see, next one. Go on. Chopper once said that his Call of Duty team deathmatch was vital for Cardiff's team bonding. Jay Boothroyd, Danny Drinkwater, Peter Whittenham, and half the starting lineup were addicted to the shooting game. I've changed my mind. I think it's that one. So just to recap, the first story is Chopper thought he stole Shearer's boots, but they were actually Shea Givens, and he yeah. didn't turn up to train out of fear, and he got fined for not turning up to training. Story number two is <laughs> a Newcastle fan lobbed a shoe at his head in that a Newcastle happen. shopping centre. Yeah. And the last story is that the Cardiff City team was addicted to team deathmatch and Call of Duty, and it was vital to their team bonding. I think it's got to be that one. That's my feeling. Do you reckon? Because I've heard you talk <clears throat> about that you did game a little bit whilst you were... Don't, don't answer him. You don't have to answer yeah, him. Don't when, don't. when are we going to find out? Um, at the end of the episode. At the end of the episode. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so obviously we touched on something there, which is, I know you must have been asked a plethora of times, boyhood Newcastle fan, just as I'm a boyhood Cardiff fan, I don't think I could ever play for Swansea. <laughs> Why did you sign for Sunderland? Do you know what? People have always asked me this. Yeah. Um, when I got the phone call from Roy Keane, it was in the summer we were in Portugal on pre-season um, and it was a withheld number and it, I, I, I didn't believe it was Roy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I was thinking... Until he started swearing at you. I, I was, I, yeah. he, was, he rang me up and he was like, uh, hi, Michael, it's Roy. And I, 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 I like literally put the phone down like that and I just... I, I was with the lads and I was like, fucking someone's winding me up here, send the Roy Keane. What did he say on the phone? He just was like, like, hi, it's Roy. Hi, hi is, is it Michael Chopper? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, it's Roy Keane. Um, You're never going to believe I was, that. I was like... And then, um, obviously, we, we, we as we got chatting, I sort of understood the Irish accent and that sort of yeah. thing. Um, and then he was just having a chat with me, saying, look, I would love to sign you. Um, obviously, we've just been promoted. Um, you're a great goal scorer. You've played against us during the season. Um, I love the way you play. But, and this is what he said, but you're a big Newcastle fan, so you're going to have to think long and hard about it. And I appreciated him because he knew that I was a Geordie. Do you know what I mean? He knew yeah. that it would be a, a massive thing. He told me to go and speak to my family. Um, in the end of the day, I've got you've got to do a football decision. Do you know what I mean? I spoke oh, yeah. to my mum and dad, um, and then I spoke to spoke to Dave Jones, and Dave was like, "Yeah, we know um, someone to put a bit in you, hmm. in for you." He was like, "Well, you're not training." <laughs> I was like, "What yeah. do you mean I'm not training?" He says, "Because." We need the money. I was like, what do you mean? They wrapped you in bubble wrap, basically, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the lads were training. They were playing a game. And uh, he, he just said, listen, you, you're not training just in case you get injured. And I was like, well... I'll... And I was like, well, I'm in Portugal. I said, Gaffer, can you just like delay it a little bit longer so I can have like yeah. a bit of a jolly up with the lads? Yeah. Um, so obviously, I knew straight away that they had to sell me the club. Do you know what I mean? Well, we were... Cardiff were facing... Yeah, there was financial. Yeah, I remember during the season before I left, we didn't get paid on time. We the, the training ground was at Trafforest. Yeah, the lads were getting doing weights in the car park, and it was freezing. Do you know what I mean? When you were eating for, food in like yeah, shipping por containers, porter cabins, porter yeah, cabins, it was yeah. ridiculous. Um, cold Camping food and everything. Club. It was it was crazy. But and the gaffer said to me, "Look, we need we need you to go. We need the money. We paid three hundred grand for you. Mm. We're gonna get five million that can go towards a new training round and yeah. whatever whilst I can bring some new players in. So I was like, okay. And then I spoke to my agent and he said, look, there's some other clubs interested in you. I think Villa might have been interested at Everton. Um, well, bear in mind, just a context here, people watching, maybe Alex, you scored 22 goals that, that season for Cardiff? Yeah, I just signed a new deal in February as well. And how deal. old are you at that time? Um, 
2006, I would have been 23, I think. You know, 22. 22, 22 23 yeah. years old, scoring 22 goals in a championship. Yeah. You must that, have had That a was lot my first season, do you know what I mean? It was... Uh, it's your first goal scoring season. Yeah, I, yeah. Had to, I had to drop out the Premier League just to prove myself to them. Yeah. They take one step back, two forwards. Um, and then I was thinking, spoke to mum and dad and spoke to my agent and for a football decision, being back home in Newcastle, living in, in Newcastle as well. But one of the most important things was to actually work under Roy. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's been the man a captain for a long time. His standards were so high. I wanted to understand why people respected him so mm. much. So I uh, I spoke to him a few days later and I made my decision that I, I was going to go. And look, if Cardiff weren't in the situation the way, and I probably would would have stayed. Because it almost stops your momentum. You're on that roll mm. and you probably knew the next season that you were going to hit the ground running again. And who knows who could have come in for you at that point? Yeah, that's right. And obviously, um, I'm pretty sure it was that year when, yeah, it was that year. I just bought a new house as well. It was in the middle of getting built. Me and Steve McPhail, we bought one next door to each other in in, uh, Corntown, just outside of Cowbridge. Um, So I was getting a house built and everything. And then to leave it and go move back up. I just moved all my stuff back down to then take it all back yeah. up to the northeast. you know what I mean? After after like eight months. But It's crazy though, football like that as an industry. <clears throat> like if you want a family and kids in football, we've spoken to other footballers, yeah. you and your family need to prepare that you're going up and down constantly. Yeah. As you said, you're driving from Newcastle to Cardiff all these times. You said there though, obviously you would have stayed. You know, if Cardiff weren't in a predicament like that, you know, how did it feel? Because I remember you... You grew so close to the the fans at that yeah. point. You were a cult hero. You had yeah. your own chance and everything. Although the Premier League's knocking, how you know when a player is in a transfer process like that, how hard is it to leave a club? No, nah, look, it was difficult. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I didn't want to leave. I, I I was playing unbelievable football. Yeah, I, I scored twenty goals by February. Do you know what I mean? And obviously. That's when I got my new deal. There was a, a clause in my contract. Nice bonus I, on that, wasn't there? When I, yeah. yeah. When, <laughs> when I signed in the summer, there was a clause to say if I hit 20 goals, I get a new deal. And by February, I think it was, I signed a new deal. and um, So I was happy, do you know what I mean? It was Things were going so well for me and everything. And then obviously, look, it's football, do you know what I mean? Things yeah. happen in football and it, uh, it was time to go back home. You had yeah. a good relationship with... Um, Mcphail then, yeah. on, on, off the pitch, obviously. Yeah. Alleged. I had a great relationship with Mac. You love playing with him, um, right? Obviously, a couple of years before that, when I was on loan at Barnsley for the season, Mac yeah, I remember was, he was, a Barnes, Mac yeah. was at Barnsley as well. And also, Peter Ridsdale was the chairman at Barnsley as well. And obviously, he was the chairman of Cardiff. So, uh, in a way, when I first came to Cardiff, I think it was down to Peter why, why, I, why I came to them. Do you know what I mean? It was I was going to go to other clubs. I was telling my agent that... Surely there's some other clubs interested in me. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I didn't, no disrespect to Cardiff at, the, at that time. I didn't, the stadium in Indian Park, I didn't know what it was like until you actually play there. Do you know what I mean? I was um, going to say, with Indian Park, Rio Ferdinand's once said, it's the most intimidating stadium mm-hmm. he's ever played at. What was it like as a player playing for the home team at Indian Park? Because it was mental. Though. Yeah, it was. I re- I look, I remember, I think it was Wolves we were playing at home. Um I think it might have been 2-2. Two, two. I can't remember what the score was. Um, but I remember behind behind the goal when you come out on the right-hand side, obviously you had the way fans half, half right and half. Right next to the home fans. And, uh, <laughs> literally half, halfway through the game, I'd just seen like loads of Wolves fans jumping over the boards in the corner and the game's going on. Obviously, look, I'm just new to it, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. turning around and thinking, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and then I've seen loads of chairs getting lobbed into the Wolves end from, from the from the Cardiff fans. Like, yeah. It was kicking off. I didn't realise how bad it was between Wolves and Cardiff at the time. Um, and it, Then it just like the atmosphere and everything. It was in, in you've got to remember we had a, that, that season, we had a great start of the season as well. Yeah. I think we beat West, I think we beat um, Birmingham at home as well. Um, West Brom might have been. Well, we were top. We Christmas. were flying, yeah, but yeah. the squad was so fucking short. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. probably why we couldn't maintain yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, when we when we were beating teams, it was unbelievable. I remember when we beat Leeds at home when I when I scored the free kick and mm. I got sent off. It was it was rocking. Do you know, it was it was a obviously hell of a Leeds. Free kick. And, we watched that earlier. Yeah, there, Leeds yeah. and Cardiff rival was massive, yeah. and then obviously. People say that I scored the best ever hat trick in Indian when I scored the hat trick against Leicester. Um, yeah. 
But all, all passes were for... Oh, was that Leicester? Leicester at home, we won 3-2, yeah, we won 3 all. But then you scored like a perfect hat against yeah. Derby, didn't you? When Peter Wynnum set up like every single goal. That was... The, no, you scored four. I scored four at yeah. the um, <laughs> Mate, Col- City Stadium. Yeah, but... <laughs> it was a joke. It, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, which which was one was the one where you had a pint of coke at halftime and it kind of spurred you on to score a hat trick? Which, which one was that? that Is, was, if that's another one, then you scored too many no, goals. No, that one... I've had. I think that must have been the. L- Could it have been the Bristol game? No, nah, I didn't score. I didn't score hat trick against no, Bristol. Didn't. It was. I think it was Leicester when we. It might have been Leicester at Ninian. Um, yeah, it must have been Leicester at Ninian because I've got the match ball in the house from the, from the Derby game, and I don't yeah. think it says you can have a pint of coke any time on there. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, who, someone there. wrote you was yeah, it the fitness coach or something I think it was the fitness coach yeah wrote that I, look I used to just need like a sugar boost you know what yeah. I mean and oh yeah it's people have a Red Bull and stuff like that but Jaffa I wasn't, cake I wasn't, and stuff, I wasn't yeah. into all that I'd just like give me sometimes I'd have a shot of coffee do you know what I mean with loads of sugar in it but um, yeah I, I just remember going in at half time and I didn't I didn't feel that great do you know what I mean and obviously when you have a sugar boost a boost gives you a little bit of energy sort of thing so yeah I asked I remember asking the fitness coach for can you give me a pint of coke and he was like what the fuck <laughs> must it, have been thinking what's going on yeah. Yeah, was that yeah. Sean Connolly was it Sean no yeah, Sean was physio. a physio yeah, yeah. but it was Alex Armstrong just asking yeah, someone to have a pint of coke he's like, <laughs> you had to go so, out to the bar he sent someone to the players lounge up in there where which which a pint of coke. ground it was and he was like oh give me a pint I just like downed it at the half time, do you know what I mean? It was. I want to talk about. Scored a hat trick straight yeah. after. Yeah. I need to talk because I've heard you speak about it in some places. I really want to get into your diet, at Cardiff, because <laughs> I've heard from other players yeah. like it was horrific. Yeah. yeah. Rustler's burgers. Yeah, I remember we went to. Uh, I think it was Wofford away when we won four uh, one. When Adam Matthews scored that goal when from the halfway line. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that over the keeper. Yeah, I think it was then I was. Uh, look, I just chuck a burger in the microwave. Do you know what I mean? I feel like sure I was at this if game. If I was hungry, do you know what I mean? It's but look, I, I, I don't believe, I believe it. <laughs> Would you have like, had the same confidence the, if you knew? It's just it's, 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 a... it's to say it's to think like you know. Obviously, I was 15, 16. Yeah. After you idolised Chopper Boss at this age, and mm. I love the fact that I didn't know you had no that idea he was eating a Russell's burger at half time. I just look. I just had that belief in my ability. Yeah sports scientist and all that sort of thing yeah if, if you if you're a good player you, you, were a good you wouldn't player. get away with it now though would you they wouldn't let you I, they wouldn't let you of course yeah I mean, obviously the game's changed but back then it's do you know what i mean obviously if it, if if it was a, a different physio and that they would have probably said no to me um mm. but um yeah that, i just believed in my ability if i score goals why why change things do you know yeah. what i mean it, and i doubt what, anyone at the club made, is exactly cares, yeah. what makes you happy Mm. Keep keep it that way. I remember when I drove down from Newcastle to uh, to Cardiff one time. You know, obviously it was one of them long drives. I think I left at about two thirty, and I got to train at like eight thirty, nine o'clock. Um, I'd stopped off at one of the services, and I got like twelve Krispy Kremes for the lads. <laughs> <laughs> Were they for the lads? <laughs> it, it was at the at the Vale, and obviously we we tra- yeah. we trained downstairs where the rugby lads train now. Um. And I walked in, and some of the lads are doing weights and all that. And uh, <laughs> I walked in with these crispy cremes, and Sean Conley's come out the physio room, and he's just fucking smashed them on the floor. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Do you know what I mean? I was like, I They're expensive, crispy they're not cre- cheap. Yeah, yeah. 50 or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, fucking for the lads and all that. He was like, I don't give a fuck and all that, and stuff like that. And I had a little argument with them. But yeah, yeah that's, do you know what I mean? It's just one of those yeah. things. It's yeah. just, Talking of uh, strange diets, uh, we spoke about John Parkin before uh, we started recording. And to be fair, I've seen clips of this, and I wanted to give you know give you a platform really to reply to some of the accusations. What Not were so the accusations? accusations? What yeah, were the what, talk us comments? What, well, you know, obviously what you've said. seen on under the caution stuff like that. How me and Jay have been treated by yeah. Dave Jones, and obviously he was bringing. It, he's a striker, and he wants to wants to play in the team. And if you're not getting selected. Um, and he's doing all he can in training then then he's trying to complain but at the end of the day me, me and Jay were flying do you know what I mean it's mm. we were we were scoring goals we were winning games um, the partnership we had together was, was unbelievable and rightly so the gaffer would give us time off and I used to say to the gaffer if, if I score and we win can I, can I have a couple of days off to go back up to Newcastle and 
the gaffer was like, yeah, no problem. Um, he would he would do similar stuff with Jay, but Jay obviously didn't didn't go home. He lived in Cardiff. Yeah. Um, you know, it was just little things like that. But it, he, he said something as well about like you and <clears throat> Jay were too busy, you know, too indulged in arguing about. Who had the best Versace bag or Gucci bag? D and G, it was. What was it? Dolce and Gabbana. Oh, it was. So you do remember? Is that true? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 And well, look, but you're you're kids but at the end of the day. Exactly. Like, yeah. Enjoy your your career. Me, me, me and Jay liked our fashion back then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And 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 stuff like that. So obviously, I uh, I would go to I think it might have been flannels in in Cardiff City Centre yeah. and buy some DNG stuff. Coming the next day and. <laughs> that sort of thing and uh it was funny and jay, jay was like oh how how much dng stuff you got on today and stuff like that it was just banter between us do you know yeah, what i mean that's normal at the stuff, end of the day yeah. if people don't like it they don't like it but when me and jay are producing and, and scoring goals and <laughs> keeping parky out the team which yeah just that's there. obviously what he's just imagine imagine the team, you know standard what I mean? is like slazenger t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> with a bean slops down it yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like the thing is, like he's done really well with Under the Cost. Yeah. He's been it's on a this brilliant. podcast and stuff. And, and he was a great guest on the podcast. And he was just, a good laugh. This, this really is nice the problem. Yeah. Sometimes with these platforms, like obviously you were so great for the club. Parkin came into Cardiff and bit complained the whole time. You know, he was, he was a good player at a certain level. Yeah. But I don't necessarily agree about going on other podcasts and calling other players out who were quite clearly doing very well for the club well you do it on podcasts don't you to get viewers yeah and, and stuff like that what do, what do viewers want they want to hear shit about other players and, yeah. and that sort of thing that's that's basically you, you mentioned something about Hudson done. as well who's obviously the, uh, the captain yeah. of Cardiff yeah Hudson there. mentioned something as well on uh, under the cosh about gangsters turning up at training and I was I was hiding nothing nothing like that happened at Cardiff do you know it what didn't. I mean nah um, but what had happened was at another football club, mm. um, and obviously, look, what well, actual gangsters? Yeah, well, obviously, I had a big problem with the gambling no, course, and stuff like that. That's, so that's fucking when, scary when, mate. when you've borrowed money off people yeah. and the wrong people. Yeah, and it's it's time to get the money back. Do you know what I mean? And you don't pay on time, yeah. even if you're one day late. People yeah. don't like it. Um, I've got to be honest. Like, I, we, we <clears> didn't really want to speak about the gambling because you get asked. All I the time, guess it's so. It, and I, it's like we don't want it to define mm. you because, like, you're so much more than that. But yeah. I want to more focus on how were you feeling at that time? You must have been shitting yourself. Mm, not really. Did, I just, was just this at Ipswich? Did you say? Yeah, it was Ips, it, yeah. I just cracked on. I'm just it didn't phase you. Playing football. I yeah. just thought, what what happens happens. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's mm. life. Yeah. Um, it was that's how that's how the way I was. It's just I take each day as it comes. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, um, the one to Ipswich. I remember, even even Jimmy Bollard's mentioned it on something as well. He mentioned the wrong story. Oh, I remember used, coming I used off to have one called the Magic Spencer yeah, yeah. podcast. Yeah. I remember coming off the training pitch and um, Jimmy and Cresy were in front of me, um, and obviously somebody has been standing there with with like an autograph. we just pretending to get autographs. And one of them was asked, Crazy, where, where's Chopra? And obviously, the mention now is behind. And then Jimmy had said that, I had said to the guy, oh, there he is. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, that asked me where Chopra is and I pointed at Crazy. But no, he, and then he came up to me and he was like, uh, listen, you need to get in the club now and, and, and get that money sorted. Um, but even then, there was, a, there was a car in the car park when I was at Ipswich and it was like full of Somalians, I think it was. But Ipswich, Ipswich were really good. Do you know what I mean? They uh, they looked after you. They looked after me. They helped me with the the gambling addiction. At the time, it was it was worrying because people are looking for me and, and after me. I remember um, I had the same car as Dowell Murphy. Um, after training, we were going to the David Lloyd to do some um, a cool down in the swim pool, and they must have thought that Murph was me. Mm. And when he drove out, the fucking drove out after him. Because no. I remember Murph ringing me up saying, listen, these fucking <laughs> oh people, the people on, in this car must yeah. think I'm fucking new. Um, but no, I sw- look, Paul Jewell was brilliant at the time. I spoke to Paul about it on the day it happened. Um, and Ipswich were, were brilliant with me, do you know what I mean? Roy uh, Keane was really good with you as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Roy, Roy was the first one that got me into rehab. Mm. Um, how, did he, how did that conversation come about with Roy? Um... <laughs> I think I think it was pretty much when I first signed at the club. Um, told them that I hadn't a gambling debt and it was a little bit of an addiction. So you had someone at the club to like approach about that, or was it just 
you know, what made no, you... No, my, my agent spoke to the club right. about it. Um, and obviously, Roy, Roy was brilliant. Obviously, Roy's got his own personal problems. Um, and he, he, Roy was really good. He was like, listen, you're, you're going straight to, to rehab to get to get sorted. It wasn't like, continue to play and or you'll be okay and that sort of thing. He, he knew all about addictions. Um, and he was like, listen, I'm going to call... Um, call the guy at Sport and Chance Clinic, uh, Tony Adams's clinic, and I'm going to get you booked in. It was fully booked, so he sent me to the. Um, there was a hospital in London called Capio Nightingale, and I was staying in the Landmark Hotel, and I was going to Capio Nightingale um, for treatment and all that. But it was just fucking bollocks. I didn't want to be there. Do you know mm. what I mean? I didn't. I didn't want to stop gambling. Mm. And if you don't want to stop, you never. You, you, you're never going to stop. Um, but Roy was Roy was always there for me. Do you know what I mean? After training, how are your chops? Come to my office if you if you need me. Come and have a cup of tea with me and, and that sort of thing. Look, he was he, he was really really good. Like other managers were, people at Ipswich were brilliant as well. Do you know what I mean? They they really went out the way to look after me. Simon Clegg, Paul Jewell. I remember, <clears throat> obviously the first year I got fined quite a lot at Ipswich. Mm. Um, so obviously Paul Jewell's mentioned to the owner. If we get chops right, we've got a good chance of going up. Yeah. So Ipswich sent me to a, a fitness camp, like a retreat in California in the ashram. Mm. I went with the fitness coach and everything to get proper super fit. Um, it was it was brilliant, you know what I mean? Um, with Ipswich, they brought in uh, a guy called Steve Williams. He was an Olympic grower. He won a gold medal with Redgrave and that. Yeah. They brought him to the training ground to just look after me, take me to the David Lloyd, um, make sure I'm eating healthy and everything. Um, they, they didn't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? They were brilliant, and little things like that, you you realise how much clubs mean to you. Do you know what I mean? And, and looking after players and stuff that like that. Support network, yeah. Because obviously Roy Keane's got that, you know, that reputation of being a hard mm. man, just yeah. really brutal and almost. Well, horrible Greg Helford didn't have good things to say about. Well, it's yeah. just the the way you get on with him, isn't it? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. people don't see eye to eye with Roy. No, but if he's going out of his way to, he doesn't have to ask you to. Well, come exactly, yeah. exactly. He, he, he doesn't, doesn't need. At the to end of the day, he's chat. a manager, and I'm just yeah. a player. He's got but, other shit to worry about. But the fact that he was let, you know, put his hand out to yeah. help you, that speaks volumes. Mm. Of course, it doesn't. That's a ta- that's a why. If anyone says to me, "What do I like?" I've always got good good words for him because he was he was always there for me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A lot like Alan Shearer was there for me at Newcastle when I when I first. Had the addiction. He, I had the same agent as Alan, and he, he called my agent up and, t- and told him, "You need to get Michael some help. He's he's got a problem." Yeah. Um. But yeah, you you you, you can see which people look out for you and, and, and who don't. How are you doing these days? With yeah, all good, mate. All good. Yeah. You just take it day by day. But yeah, all good, mate. It'll always be there. In, in yeah, the it's back always of in mind, the back obviously. of mind and stuff like that. It's but like with just, anything, you, yeah. it's like with alcohol, cigarettes, mm. drugs. Mm. It's an addiction. Yeah. And it's a daily fight, but I'm glad you do better. Yeah. It's Have you got any mate. advice like for people who would be in a similar situation think, or footballers that yeah, are in a look, similar situation? If, if, if it's not just gambling, it's anything, mental health, anything. You just reach out to people. Mm. A lot of people are afraid. I was afraid to, to speak to people. I thought I could keep it all to myself. And it's the worst thing ever. You've got to go out and, and seek help. There's loads of people in the same position as, as me. Do you know what I mean? I, and I, look, I, I didn't realise why you had his own problems and stuff like that and we're all in the same boat and it was great to to communicate with people and and that sort of thing so if anyone's got any problems don't be afraid to reach out to people because everyone wants to try and help yeah. but look at sandro tonali now in yeah. newcastle he's i mean potentially a career ending it's not even an injury it's no. but it's a mental injury and it's something that he's really and, struggling and with. this is this is what i don't agree with with the fa and and that sort of thing because you take football away then it's going to affect the mental health yeah Whereas if you let them play football and you, you help them as well on the side, they're still enjoying what they love doing, which is their life. And um, they, they, can, they can get the help they need to to make sure they're better people in, in the long run. They're punishing people for exactly. illnesses, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point, yeah. actually, because any other addiction, you'd get the support network. Yeah. But to ban you for a genuine addiction, like he obviously can't mm. help it. As you well know, 
it, it, take, it takes over you. Yeah, and, and, and so I don't like understand. To then take away your job that is your only distraction. And then you hear people, well, why is he gambling? He's got, he's earned oh. thousands yeah. and this sort of thing. People don't understand what an addiction is, do you know what yeah. I mean? They just think you can switch a switch yeah. and so, oh you've away. got enough money now why yeah, would you need more exactly, yeah. You're yeah. Up to yeah. Earnings. You, yeah. you might earn I don't know a, a grand a week as a yeah. as a brickie yeah. and you'll gamble 900 pound that way you yeah. could earn 10 grand as a footballer and you'll gamble 9,000 yeah, exactly. it's just mm. you're, it's exactly. the exact Relative. same illness yeah, yeah. For, the, the, for different people yeah. and people don't take it as serious as they yeah. need to and tonight mm. is a great example of that um, but yeah, I wanted to get away from the gambling side because I know you've spoken about it yeah. a lot, but you know, really do appreciate nah, no problem. Uh, talking. Um, wanted to like derby goals. I know you've got a question about the Newcastle one, but obviously, one sticks out in my mind. I was there. <laughs> I actually thought it was Steve McPhail <laughs> for, <laughs> until I got home because <laughs> the, after you scored the winner against Swansea, it went into so much pandemonium. I didn't even have time to to like take in who yeah. scored the goal so I, literally i was like that was a good goal from Stephen fell on her dad he's like it was chopper i was like no fucking way my dad had a seat thrown in his head from the swansea fans it was mental yeah but like i wanted to ask you what does it feel like in that moment to score a last minute winner against bitter rivals look you can see it in my face my celebration don't know what to do oh, with yeah. myself. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, I literally ask me now why i why i done a roly poly that <laughs> Why did I not just jump in with the fans? Do you know what yeah. I mean? I look back now and I just think, should have jumped in, the, in with the fans. Because um, you were so calm and composed with the Bristol girl that you took your boot off as if yeah. it was on fire. But against oh, Swansea, yeah. Yeah. It, it, do you know what it was like? It was like you went back to like your child, mm. like inner just, child. I think it's just a relief that you've 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 beat your, your rivals. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Go Leading up to the game, look, I'm a, I know myself when Newcastle Sunderland, I know how much it means to the fans. Mm. So when you're in Asda and them sort of places in, in Cardiff and you're getting fans coming up to you saying come on we've got to beat the Jacks at yeah. the weekend how often thing. would that happen pretty much a lot mate a lot sometimes we couldn't really go out in supermarkets do you know what I mean because you, you, you're you getting a lot of people coming up to you and fans and stuff like that and some people can't deal with it yeah. it gets too much mm. for them yeah, but I don't think look, I'd at like the end it. of the day it's, it's an important game for the, for the fans do you know what I mean most importantly they get the bragging rights um so obviously look playing in derby games I, I, I love playing in derby games that they're, they're the games what you look out for when the fixtures are, are first and out the games i look out for when do we play swansea what does it feel like though because obviously in the stands i was at the game i've been at a lot of car and it, it's almost like it's palpable the tension you almost feel yeah. sick you were man united liverpool the other day you said you felt sick oh yeah when you're actually a player the car swansea like is there a difference? Do you feel different on that pitch? I, I feel a difference. Yeah. Some people say... It's just I've, I've another heard, game. It's not. I've heard Dave say in interviews... It's Dave just Jones, he, game. he used to do that yeah. fan's head in that. Yeah. Game. But I just think another game. Just, yeah. <laughs> but look, I, I, I think, look, growing up, Geordies are the same as, as Cardiff fans. Mm. They're, they're really passionate about football. Um, I knew how much it meant to the fans. Mm. And I think that's what kind of helped as well we had a, a really strong bond of players we had some welsh boys in the team as well and they they would drill yeah, it like into us do you know what i mean handies, it means yeah. a lot to the yeah. to the fans and the club um and when you're going out there it's just like brilliant you know what i mean the atmosphere and everything and then when you go one nil down and obviously we're in the playoffs there in the playoffs we're both mm. challenging do you know what i mean um whoever wins is probably well we we won thankfully and they couldn't get in the playoff sort of thing it kind of it kind of derailed them a bit them, you know yeah. what i mean you lose that game and your head's down it's gonna be hard to then climb yeah. momentum and that sort of thing um but yeah look a special moment you know what i mean people forget i scored the the first one as no, well I because they only I they only talk I, I, about I the winner yeah. <laughs> it is but it even is even the first goal yeah. the first goal was important you know what i mean mm. it was on the stroke yeah. of half time um, yeah on the stroke of half time if you go in one nil down the dressing room's a totally different environment. Yeah. But going in 1-1, one, one, it's, it's give all the lads a bit of a boost. And look, and, and obviously, before I scored, Marshy's made a, a great save from uh, remember, Chef yeah. Capucci's I header know. as oh well. Oh my God, I remember. So it's just fine margins, do you know what I mean? It can go one way or it can go the yeah. other. And look, Is that David Marshall? Yeah. yeah. 
underrated goalkeeper. Yeah, he was really I thought he was player, brilliant. Yeah. The season. Oh he mate, I thought player. he was so good. Yeah, and yeah. that's like obviously not a Cardiff fan, but I remember watching him thinking he's unbelievable. Nobody would talk about him, but yeah, I thought yeah, he was brilliant he in the Premier League. Yeah, he was David a Marshall. really good goalie. Is right. there a, is there a goalkeeper that you played with that you know as a striker? particularly in training, that you thought, do you know what, they're a level above? Well, obviously, I played with Shay Given and oh them type God. of keepers, do you know what I mean? Mm. He's... I see all you've done there. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, uh, he was unbelievable. Obviously, when I was at Sunderland, I played with Craig Gordon. He was obviously the most He's expensive class. goalkeeper at the time. Um, we, brilliant goalkeeper. Um, so, yeah, I played with, played with some great goalkeepers. Mm. Mm. I wanted to go back as well earlier when we mentioned your four goals against Derby. Yeah. Um, pretty much all of those goals were set up by one person, Peter Whittenham. Obviously, unbelievable footballer. Um, you know, what was it like playing with him? Which was unbelievable. Um, sorry that he's not here anymore as well. Uh, it's sad. But even I go back to the season 2006, I think it was, when he when he came. I think he came halfway through the season. Um, and I remember the, the goal I scored against Preston. Um, when he done that Cruyff on the on oh, the touchline, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, I've played against Wits loads of times in yeah. Aston Villa reserves. So oh, I'm, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So would have, yeah. I, I knew all about Wits, and the gaffer obviously Dave had told me that he was going to try and sign certain players in yeah. in the January window, and Wits was one of them. And I knew if we could get Wits, then it's going to be going to take Cardiff to another level. Um, so because obviously look I, pl- I played against a lot of players mm. and when I was in Newcastle Reserves and which was one of them he, he, he was a fantastic player um, but I remember that that the way he set me up for that goal it was brilliant but look I I knew that you get in the right space in the box Witt will find it his left foot was unbelievable it's honestly insane and I think that's why he's gone down in history of being one of the, the best ever championship players that's, well, he was named I think that's, by that's um, been, the EFL is the, yeah. the greatest and then Tarap was second, uh, but the greatest championship player. And yeah, as you said, his wand was insane. He was a Premier League player, but he just didn't have the pace. And even he used to say that in interviews, that like yeah. he doesn't have the pace. And you needed that in the Premier League. He was a lot faster. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that left one, you know, deserved to be in the Premier League. I wanted to ask, if you don't mind, like, how did, uh, obviously, his unfortunate death, how did that affect you guys? Because obviously, you must all keep in touch. Yeah, well, look, I remember I was in Indonesia at the time, um, yeah. and and Dave called me, um, and and told me what what had happened. Oh, Dave come, Jones. Yeah, Dave Jones rang me up when I was in Indonesia. It was late at night in Indonesia, and I was I was devastated. I, I, obviously, Indonesia is about six seven hours ahead, so I was in bed and I just got out of bed and I was, I was just sitting on 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 the sofa and just just crying because I couldn't even now it, it it I get upset about it. Um, because I was really close with it, yeah. When when I played at Cardiff, um, but he, look, he was a great kid. It, it was, uh, it was just a shame what had happened in, in the wrong place at the wrong time yeah. and, and that sort of thing. But whenever people mention his name and every, anyone just speaks so highly about him, do you yeah. know what I mean? He, he was, he was an unbelievable player, and I, I was lucky enough to to play with him. Yeah, and you know that that team that period it was a magical team. Yeah. It was probably the last time Cardiff generally had an identity and how, how they played. And yeah, you know, obviously rest in peace with him. He's an absolute legend. Um, you know, wanted to kind of go towards another Derby kind of uh, goal you scored. Um, oh, Newcastle Sunderland. Yeah. You, what, how does that compare? The, the North East Derby compared to Cardiff Swansea? Do you know what? It's pretty similar. Mm. Um, obviously this year is the first time they've played them in a long time. And they they had the bubble like what Cardiff had when they yeah, travelled to Swansea. Game, yeah. um, the the rivalry is unbelievable. It's the same. Do you know what I mean? And I remember we were we were getting beat one nil. So I think Sunderland had already been relegated as well, and we were getting beat one nil. Um, and Glenn Roder, sadly, he's not here as well. Um, I remember Glenn speaking to me at half time, and he was like, "Listen, we're getting beat one nil. Just make sure you're ready." Um, he was like, "Are you ready?" I was like, yeah, "I'm a Jordy, of course I'm ready." We're playing Sunderland. <laughs> Be ready since you were a kid. <laughs> Do you know what mm, I mean? Yeah. And um, obviously, Lee Clark's come off being a being a Jordy. Used to play for Sunderland. He obviously didn't like it. 
and as I've gone on and as I've as I've run on, um I just kind of ran straight into the box and Titus has played a free kick in the box. The ground's been like literally <laughs> bone dry and the ball's bounced. But in, normally it skids through, but it's kind of skipped back and um I think the keeper was Calvin David. He's come to try and get it. As he's come to get it, I've just smashed him, do you know what I mean? You you're in a top, mm. you just go through him, do you know what I mean? <laughs> And uh, thankfully for me, it's fell like literally on on the goal line. I've just tapped it in and started cel- going mad, celebrating with the Geordies. Do you know what I mean? We, we, I've scored a goal, my first Premier League goal against Sunderland. That's insane. Made it one one, and then we go on and win the game four one, and we we, we batter them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Turned the, the trajectory of the game. Pretty mm. much, yeah. As a kid, yeah. coming on, yeah. that's got to be up there. Best yeah. moment. Right? I would still that, be going to bed every night. <laughs> Thinking of that, yeah. that the, the the goal against Sunderland and obviously the goal against Swansea are, are, are up there. As, look, they might not be great goals, but most goals, important okay. goals. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're special goals to score in any derby. Special. You say they're not great goals though. Like any goal is a great goal. But the, your move for the Swansea that. goal, you know, when Wildig heads it over you, to stay people, onside well, in that moment. People people have always asked me what, why why are you even standing on the edge of the box when yeah. there's a throw in. Yeah, ninety-two minutes. Yeah. Why are you not in the box getting a flick on? Yeah, but it's just instinct. Do you know what I mean? It's not your game. It's just it's just one of them things where I don't. I, I, even now, I don't know why I was standing there. Yeah, why I wasn't in the box at the back post, waiting, or if the ball goes short, comes back out and, and then uh, gets whipped in, sort of thing. And then, look, I was I was just there. Do you know what I mean? I was perfect timing and everything. It was just it was, like I said, all, all my goals are just inst- instinct. Mm. That's that's what a striker is. You, it, it automatically happens. You, you're not coached it. You're not taught it. It's just, it's just comes it's natural. Just there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you look at some of the stuff Wayne Rooney done mm. over the course of his career. You can't mm. teach that. Yeah. You can't Same as Michael Owen, I suppose. Yeah, when exactly, you play with yeah, Michael you can't Owen, teach yeah. some of this stuff. It, you're born with it. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to kind of finish up the episode with obviously. The Two Lies and a Truth, <laughs> Michael Chopper edition. So obviously, just to recap, guys, the first story was uh, when Chopper was coming through the ranks, he thought he stole Alan Shearer's boots, but in fact, they were actually Shea Givens, and he got fined for not turning up to training because he was scared. Uh, the other story is an angry Newcastle fan threw a shoe at Chopper's head in a Newcastle shopping centre. And the final story is Chopper once said that Call of Duty's team deathmatch mode was the main reason for Cardiff City's great integral bond in that period. So, I think it's that one. I think it's the Call of Duty one. Why? That's what I'm going with. You're so adamant. Because at the time, Call of Duty, that was COD 4, wasn't it? Well, 2000 and... Is that COD 4? Yeah, it was COD Modern Warfare. 2008, 2009. See, he knows it. He knows it already. See, he (laughs) knows... You see it. (laughs) No, fair. (laughs) Well, you might, you know, you might have just played. Yeah. No, uh, no. no Cod Four at the time. I think that that's uh, probably what gave it away. And I did hear you in an interview talk about how you liked. <laughs> oh to, right, liked okay. To, yeah. yeah, there we go. No, so, no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that bit, but I knew you liked the game. I want to talk so. about that. So were, were you, Danny Drinkwater, <coughs> listen, there was actually were playing. There was. Uh, I'm, I'm talking. There must have been about eight lads, not just what like two private or three. lobbies or. So sometimes we would, after training, obviously. Wits didn't have any kids. Uh, I didn't have any kids. Drinky was on loan, so he would come down sometimes. We'd take, I'd just take my TV and go around Witter's. Really? We'd, we'd, we'd go around Witter's house and just put the TVs next to each other and like four or five PlayStations in the room and just playing COD. And what a dream. Anyway, I can't believe that. Not, not just that though, but even even like um, if we didn't go to Witter's, then we'd be in our own, ho- own homes. Yeah. And the lads used to say, right, okay. Some of the lads had kids, Gavin Ray and, and, and stuff like Kev McNaughton. So they would um, put their kids to bed and send a message in the in the group saying, please jump on COD. And we, we'd go on at like eight, nine o'clock and playing COD till like one in the morning. It is a team, but it is a yeah, bonding well, experience, you know, right? That, yeah, I so just... I think it was like, you, you can play with six in a party, I think it was. Mm. Um, and we used to, we, listen, we used to go on there and just, just absolutely just smash people. Do you know really? what I mean? Kev McNaughton was unbelievable at college. Was he, I was, was going to say, yeah, was he Yeah, Kev the best? was brilliant, really good, yeah. What really were you good. like? I was all right. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I was all right, yeah. You ever get the band back together? I, I, look, I'd love to, but some of them probably don't play it. Do you know what I mean? I, Mate, I still, I still play, st- play the PlayStation. Uh, what do you, what'd you play? Thought, what no, about no. COVID? I would have thought that would have... Yeah, that would have been... <coughs> yeah, COVID would have been, yeah, been brilliant, but yeah. 
I don't know. The, look, that's probably why we were so close and yeah. mm-hmm. done so well as a team because the bonding we had. If we would go to a restaurant, we'd go as a nine or ten lads would go to the restaurant and we'd go Nando's down the bay. There'd be ten of you there. Yeah. Whereas now you'd probably see two or three lads going mm. from the first team together. Yeah, you do. We had a that really, we, yeah, we had like a, a really big. good connection. It was unbelievable. Um, well, thank you, Activision. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> jo- we obviously joke about it, but uh, it yeah. it did make a big difference. Yeah, definitely. Look, I think I think it happens with loads of football clubs. Mm. Loads of them play Call of Duty. Mm. I was watching a thing on YouTube not that long ago where um, I think one of the YouTubers might have been Speed or someone. I, I don't know if it was. Speed. Oh yeah, that guy. They were playing yeah. um, uh, Fortnite. Yeah, and Harvey Barnes and a couple of the Newcastle uh, boys absolutely yeah. destroyed them. Mm. I think and he was going, "Who the fuck's Harvey Barnes?" Fuck, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And he's yeah. a, a YouTuber and stuff like that. But it's just look, it's I've watched it. They're on clubs at the moment, pro clubs yeah, on FIFA. Yeah, people play pro clubs. Yeah, yeah. but there, there was a t- there was, I think Sammy Schmodix was up front. <laughs> what? Yeah, what it, actual it, Sammy Schmodix? Yeah, it was it was mad because the the team you went through it. It was Sammy Schmodix. Who else? Was there? It was a couple of Prem players yeah, as so well. We, we we would try and get out like obviously if you knew players from a different club as well. Yeah we'd try and get like four or five of our lads to play their lads as well in a private lobby. Wow. Alan Tate. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I just and love then, Avocado and versus then, Swansea. And then when I went to Ipswich, <laughs> we, we, all the lads were hooked on Clash of Clans. Oh, no that way. Yeah, that was yeah. a pretty addictive game. So we, we mm. would, after a game, if we won, all the lads would sit at the back of the bus and you spend fucking 75 quid on oh my god all, all these uh, gems and stuff yeah, like that yeah. oh look you, at my ogre. that's what we used to do but used I bet to... you'd, be, you'd look forward to that yeah, part yeah, of it that was like one when, of the big things it's just one of the things we used to do if we, if we win a game we, we'd buy the, the maximum amount of uh, gems and that's boost your you forget uh, football as a kid though you boost you know your thing up you know what I mean, up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every, every, everyone's the same like everyone's people you know with yeah. 31 I still feel yeah. like a kid but like you know, when you were playing for chop, uh, playing for Cardiff, you were in your mid twenties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so when you were, yeah. you were actually a kid. Yeah, mad. Well, it's all great memories. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you never lose them. I was, I was speaking to, to somebody at the at the club today, and they were asking me questions about a game we used to play with the fifty pence on the pitch. Um, Percy introduced it, and oh, did, Darren Pearce. Yeah, yeah, he start the game with a, holding the fifty pence, <laughs> and then he, you'd have to pass it round oh while you're playing God. on the pitch. That's genius. Oh, no, during a football game? During a football game. No. Yeah. That's no, mad. Shut up. So, so we're half time. Whoever's got Are the you f- telling me right now that you used to play a game in championship football standard and we're, you're all passing a 50 yeah, pence 50 round pence. as a game? Yeah. We need to pull up some old clips, don't so, we? Uh, per, uh, if, you, if you ever speak to Percy, ask him about the 50 pence game. Somebody was talking to me about it today. I can't believe so that. So we, whoever's stuck with it at half time has to buy like a round of pints genius. and stuff like that for all the lads and whoever's left with it at the end has to buy like the meal for the lads but you couldn't say no to the 50 pence so you don't know who's got it so, How would you pass so it to on someone? a corner you're oh, like so you're on a corner you're like <laughs> that's <laughs> class that's you know class what I mean? it's just little, little things like that next time if you ever bump into the person you just say oh do you want to play a 50 pence game? Uh, 100 percent I literally have done it for the stadium. I'm yeah. now making it. I'm going to Traforest, mate. I'm finding him. I'm going to be, yeah, can we play the 50 pence game? That's brilliant. Yeah. Just little little things like that, you know. That's I mean? one of the it's best just, stories yeah. I've heard in terms of football. Yeah. I can't believe that. Like as non-footballers, as people who've never played the game, we are I've, I've, we're fascinated by like little insights yeah, like that. So yeah. that like people want to hear that sort yeah. of stuff. 100 yeah. percent that's class. Well, awesome. We'll finish on that. Oh, oh, Michael, honestly, thank nah, you brilliant. so much. Loved it. Loved really it. appreciate it. Pleasure, that. mate. Thank you for doing amazing. It. Obviously, good luck for the future. Yeah. And um, yeah, everyone, I don't know if you've got anything you want to shout about or anything. You don't need to. to no, I'm, I'm perfectly cool. All Just good. keep following your podcast. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, appreciate that. It's really good. Everyone keep listening and that sort of thing. Oh, oh, thanks. Really Robert. appreciate that, mate. It. We'll see you uh, next Wednesday, every Wednesday for the rest of the season. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Cheers. It's not true, so I just... I was wondering if you saw that. Do you want to speak about the podcast?
I, I don't mind it. Really. Yeah, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll speak about it on the podcast. Yeah, hundred percent. Even even Hoods, Cause, cause I think Hoods has said something on there as well. That's not mm. true. Do you know what I mean? It's it's gonna yeah, be good to set yeah. the record straight for something yeah. Yeah. like that as well. Definitely. Like you said, people turned up the training ground. And I was hiding and stuff like that. That happened at Ipswich. It didn't happen at Cardiff. I was gonna say yeah. like I would never heard of any stories. Yeah. No. I did. Yeah, fucking like, gangsters turned up at the train. Really? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're talking about everything before. Sorry, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got. 